We're going to be joined today via Zoom by Dr. Tunika George Oloyori. And together we're going to be talking about fertility problem. We're going to look at um, saving eggs and sperm, purpose for saving them, and how you should and why you should save your eggs. You can actually save eggs. For, for future use. You can also save your sperm for future use. So she's going to be telling us so much about this this afternoon. But before she joins us, let's quickly run through what is happening in our society today. We know that uh, there's cholera, whether you want to believe it or not, there is cholera in over 18 states in the country. And uh, you have to be very, very careful what you do. So I want to give you information on cholera, which is a highly contagious and severe disease. You may want to know the cause of cholera. It is caused by consuming food or water contaminated with feces from an infected person, poor hygiene, poor environmental sanitation, and inadequate access to clean water. Yes, like Fela would say, water, water everywhere, but no portable water to drink. You know that these days, a lot of persons have their, their boreholes situated near the seaway. Yes, where they have their seaway system, that's where their borehole is, just a few meters. And the tendency that leakages from the seaway will definitely seep into the, the borehole system is very high. Okay, so you may want to be very, very careful. So if your environment is dirty, if you drink unclean water, you would definitely uh, have problems with cholera. And symptoms include diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and abdominal cramps. And you can prevent cholera if you drink clean water clean, potable water, wash your hands frequently with soap and water, keep your environment clean and hygienic, and then avoid close contact with cholera patients. Cook food thoroughly, cook food thoroughly, and you can also imbibe these safe practices of um, boiling water before drinking, you filter your water, you purify, you wash your hands, and all of that. There's are many more you can do to save yourself from cholera. I was discussing this with somebody the other day, and he said, that in the kill African man. Now, what for you? You know, this kind of uh, uh, mindset is dangerous. It's suicidal to have a mindset like that, a mindset that says, that in the kill African man. You know, it kills if you are not careful. And the one that is eating deep now is uh, the monkey pox, now known as M pox, and it affects seriously children between zero and five. And so if you're not uh, very observant and diligent in taking care of your children, they may just come with M pox. When we have children between zero and five that are really, really on the very high side. All right, before we come to talk about the common things you should know about monkey pox, we're going to be joining Dr. Tonika George Oloyori, a consultant clinical embryologist who is a facility expert from the Orange Facility Center and Tony Cleo Medical Center in Abuja, Asokoro Abuja, while the Orange Fertility Center is at number one, Osaiti and Samoto Street, off First Ugbo, off Water Resources, by Felim High School here in Benin City. So, hello, Dr. Tonika, how are you doing this afternoon? Yeah, fine. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doctor. So, today we're going to be looking at. Um, uh, saving uh, eggs for future use and saving the sperm. So talk to us quickly. When we talk about egg saving or egg freezing, what are we talking about okay. and what does this process involve? Yes. All right. Egg freezing is a procedure to preserve the eggs for future use. It takes that is used for those, for those people that want to do a lot of um, egg collections. Now, what do we do when the process is on? I meant to first 
No, go ahead. Go ahead. We're listening. Okay. All right. So there are some points to consider when you want to do egg freezing. You see, yeah. there are women that um, are between 35, 37, when they don't see like a man talking to them and they know that um, time is already elapsing around them. So what they usually will do is that they search for a fertility clinic okay. where you can freeze your eggs. Okay. Good. So what do we do when you come into investigations and then uh, we see that we have simulated you, the things are okay, that, you know, at the end of it, we'll freeze this egg, not in the freezer. We freeze at minus 196 to make sure that these things are kept up to 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. I can describe each with some other persons, you know, because there's already a decline level from 35 to 40 or more that some people are already entering menopause. Hmm. So since you don't want to so that um, your treatment is something you want to preserve for the future use. And then some of them is for a call um personal reasons for delaying childbearing. Others are medical treatments or conditions that may affect fertility. And then the genetic or fertility issues. So any woman that wants to pre uh, preserve her eggs, they're usually welcome into the system. So storing it, you'll not be afraid again to attain to that position you want to. You may be so busy in your job, and then you are looking at it that no man actually approached you, or you just feel that you are not looking beautiful. So at the end of the day, you are more productive in society, mm -hmm. especially when you know, okay, I'm getting older, from 35 years, 36, 40, 41. Okay, is so it the same? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, so, so now when they come in, there's a type of um, injectables that they will take that can cause, you know, ovulation. This process, the eggs are extracted through minor procedure. Then the eggs are also frozen using a particular freezing uh, fluid. Now, freezing eggs are stored in a fertility clinic or cryo bank. So we are the set of people in the fertility that can actually preserve, you know, somebody's age, whether she's like 30, 31, 32, all right, I want to freeze my eggs. Like in the future, even when she's almost like 50 years, and even that age, that is 50 years, you can come around to do what you need to. So people will ask me, how do you not do it? Because I was 35. Now I'm, I'm 50 years. Is it going to be possible? I say yes. And then you have some women too. Since they get up to 50, no man is coming to them. They decide to, you know, freeze their eggs or they collect semen from donor bank. Then these patients, you know, requires to have children. Okay. When a woman freezes an egg and wants to use for future, maybe for how long can eggs be frozen? What? For how long can eggs be frozen? Yes, we call it oocyte. You know, oocyte freezing, which is also egg, but in the terms of IVF, we use oocyte. Okay. So you can freeze your eggs as long as you can. Then you, but you'll be paying like um, every six months or one year, you know, for somebody also going for chemotherapy. Okay. Most of them is okay. They want to, yeah, uh, they want to store their eggs because this risk I can actually make them not having good quality eggs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so after, if a woman is going for chemotherapy, for example, and she decides mm -hmm. to freeze her eggs for future use, mm -hmm. you know, will, yes. will the eggs still be useful to that woman after the chemotherapy, you know, because we've heard that um, some of these chemicals can be very injurious to the woman's body. Will her body still be able to receive those eggs? Yes, you know, um, when you check the stages of uh, a woman having cancer. Yes. Because, yeah, we have to do some tests. Because before you begin to give hormonal um, medication, just, just because you want to take eggs, the quality of the eggs, you know, from them, is not of good quality. Okay. Now, so during that chemotherapy, you have to let your doctor know that you want to make use of your womb. 
and then you want to make use of your ovaries. Okay. So now, first and foremost, they will take care. They will come around. Before you start the chemotherapy, you have to come around. So for us to stimulate you and extract the eggs back to us, and they will freeze it. Okay. All right. Yeah. And the eggs will still be good for her to use. Of course. Even if she's 55 years, it's stored. But then she has to continue to renew the, from the time we started. Okay. So that you can put whatever you want to do mm. through this life. So whether there's a man or not, at the end of the day, you don't get to have a man. You can just choose somebody. Or you give, give you could not spend if the patient is ready. Okay, is it possible for a woman of about 60 who obviously cannot produce eggs anymore, who has used, yes. who has, who has attained menopause. Is it possible for the man to use donor eggs and sperm? Can you hear me, doctor? Okay, I said, is it possible for a 60-year-old woman or plus to use donor eggs and sperm to make a baby for herself? Okay, if I guess you right, you know, you're asking if a woman above 50. Yes. Oh, no, above 60. They're about if, yes. uh, she can be in the position of freezing her eggs. Yes. No, 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 no not freezing her you eggs. Know, if she is... can use donor eggs. Yes. And sperm they can to use get donor pregnant. eggs and even it... donor sperm. Yes. Can she be able to carry the pregnancy? Of course. Well, first and foremost, after your investigations, we need to show that um, you are not having underlying illness. Maybe okay. your maybe they have diabetes, you know, hypertension. If they are not having it, that's the best way we can solve their issues. Okay. But if you want that you are diabetic, you are hypertensive, we need to treat you first before any treatment. And again, we will do a scan to ascertain how the womb is. Okay. So once we do that, yeah, before we set it in for implantation to come up. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, there are three sets of numbers on your screen in case you want to continue with this conversation. There are three sets of numbers on your screen that you can call and get quick response as far as this topic is concerned, freezing of your eggs and freezing of your sperm. Is it the same thing with freezing sperm too? Is it the same procedure, the same process of freezing sperm for future use? Maybe for a man who wants to go for chemotherapy or one yes, medical health or the like other. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. So I asked if it is the same process of freezing the oocytes. Is it the same way they freeze sperm for the men, for future use? Okay, okay, yeah. If you want to go to men, yes. What we do is still the same liquid nitrogen, that's what we call it, okay. which is of minus 196 okay. degree. So you can see it is so cold, you can even burn your hands if you are not careful. Wow. So when men, maybe they want to travel out or in the course of uh, seeking treatment for infertility, then the men can actually do the same. It's also like you are storing it for years or when you need it. Okay. Because some men, they take uh, illicit drugs, you know. And even drinks that destroys most of their stem cells. So what do you do? So if if the man, like I said, is not around and you want to store the eggs, and your your wife is actually the same person that wants to also store her eggs. Mm. So the best thing is the same way. Yes, they do their extra, um, masturbation and cocktails interruptors. After it, you produce it. We go in and then we freeze it okay. for as long as the man wants to do it. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, okay. All right, if you're joining us, you're on to the program Health and Living on Independent Radio. Now, if uh, a, man spares, a man stores his sperm for future use and he decides he doesn't want to use it again, what happens? Is it thrown away? Yeah, yeah. We see patients like that. You know, there's really consent from before you also freeze. Okay. But eventually, okay, you are too busy, and then, or you move on with your life with somebody else, or you are traveling out, or you have any form of uh, infection, or you used to undergoing chemotherapy. So the okay. best thing you come around to do is sperm production. So okay. with this sperm that I said to you, is the same procedure with the egg donors, okay. or a set patient. So okay. the man can actually do 
is them to know you can get even if the woman is also really aged you can still be guilty at oh. any point in time oh, but the woman with the 60 years mm, we're not even sure the ovaries are not working anymore so they all have a very high hormonal imbalance because you know age is counting on them okay but again any man in his family he thinks that oh my brother doesn't have a child my sister didn't have you have to check their genes okay you check your genes why is this kind of thing happening so the best thing visit the hospital meet with them and they'll decide on what to do just like we're saying, menopause on women is the um, the woman cycle is declining. So is this one again for men. There's something we call andropause. Andropause are the scientists that actually look at themselves, know the head defects, stay defect, and the neck defects. Oh, that's fantastic. So, all right, uh, Dr. Yeah. Luyori, I guess uh, this is where we're going to wrap it up on today's edition of the program. I want to say thank you so much for finding time to be with us. And if you want to continue with this conversation, you can use the numbers on air. We have three sets of numbers there. And you can also visit us at number one society at Semota Street of First Ugbo. First Ugbo and Second Ugbo of Water Resources just beside Felim High School in the JRA Benin City. All right, this is all we're going to do today on the program, Health and Living. We'll see you again next week with another 15 minutes of fantastic talk on fertility. No man, no woman should be barren, according to Dr. Tonika. All right, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye for now.